So I am your token geographer, uh, and uh, I'll just say, think of geography like history, historians study time, and so you have historians who study the development of rail, um, and Lincoln, somebody was talking about Lincoln. Uh, geographers ask not just where things are, but why things are where they are. And so for me, uh, where I come into this is I, I study the politics of mobility, mostly in the Bay Area, but also uh, doing some comparisons with some European cities. And my interest does start with climate change, and so I appreciated Rod bringing in uh, climate change at the very beginning. I like to start my talks off with uh, two degrees, two degrees Celsius. Uh, we need to work backwards from two degrees Celsius, and so I see high-speed rail as critical uh, for doing that. But there's a whole bunch of moving parts, and there's a lot of uh, politics, and for me, for 20 years, I've been frustrated with how long it is taking for us to get to uh, a real viable rail transportation system. Even, even a rail transportation system uh, uh, would be uh, welcome for me. Uh, so I have a, an Italian high-speed train here because even Italy has high-speed rail. And I took it between Rome and Naples, and it was excellent uh, service. So, um, so what I was uh, uh, thinking of talking about was some of the, the politics and, 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 and bringing geography into that uh, politics of California's high-speed rail. Uh, and then to give a little consideration to various backlashes and uh, and then thinking about what some of the future political challenges might be with uh, California high-speed rail. So starting out with the uh, California uh, high-speed rail uh, politics, in November 2008, uh, the map looked like this. 52% uh, of California voters approved the almost $10 billion bond, uh, 1A, um, and 48% said no. This was the first uh, 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 plebiscite, if you will, on uh, high-speed rail, and it did make it through. Um, I think it was, there were three attempts to put this on the ballot uh, before this, before it finally did get on the ballot. Um, I'll point out that uh, San Francisco voted almost 80% overwhelmingly in support of high-speed rail. Um, San Francisco's uh, voters have uh, uh, consistently voted for progressive, sustainable transportation uh, going back to uh, the, the 70s, uh, even the 60s. San Francisco uh, residents voted for the, for the BART uh, system when other counties didn't. And I think uh, Santa Clara was around 60 percent maybe. Uh, San Mateo uh, in the 60s. But you do see that there, there is a geography here where uh, you know, segments of the Central Valley, Sacramento, Orange County, San Diego, for those of you who know California politics, there's no surprise here. But I think it's still important to understand, especially when we're talking about why has high-speed rail stalled uh, across the country um, in the past uh, decade. So, um, you know, for those who, who don't know this geography, well, obviously Orange County and San Diego tend to come in a bit more conservative. Uh, Mitt Romney uh, uh, is, a, is supposedly from uh, Utah, but I think he has a big spread in uh, San Diego. Uh, the Central Valley, uh, you know, if, if, if we take this map and, and look at it in June, uh, we might see some Trump counties. I'm not sure, uh, but. Uh, what's going to happen between now and then, but uh, I have been thinking about Trump a lot because he keeps saying it's embarrassing we don't have trains. Uh, so that, that, that's, an, you know, it, 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 it's, it, for me it's interesting when high-speed rail gets into the mix, and I was fascinated when Obama kept talking about high-speed rail in 2008. So looking at the, the route, you know, some of this might be political ideology, but some of this might be well, we're not getting a station. And, and what, 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 what I look at is like, for example, San Luis Obispo here, you know, is also a place, hey, but the goal of San Luis Obispo is to get 20% of all their trips on bicycle. So I don't think they're, you know, I don't think they have a problem with high school. I think they're just upset that they're not getting uh, improved rail service. You got one train a day, uh, and it takes 12 hours to go from uh, San Francisco to Los Angeles. 
Uh, you got uh, Ventura County. Uh, I'm not sure, uh, but probably because they don't have an alignment. It's obvious with Orange and, 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 and the Central and, and, and San Diego, but you can see the Bay Area really came in uh, for uh, Prop 1A. Uh, but for some comparison uh, and to think about uh, uh, the, the political dynamic, here's the Obama uh, uh, McCain uh, results, and you do see a similar uh, geography there where the, the, the Fresno, which is getting our first high speed rail line. Uh, uh, went for uh, McCain, the Bay Area came in strong for Obama, Southern California with the exception of Orange County there, but Orange County was close. Um, and I think, uh, you know, th this map to me also was also optimistic because it showed that, you know, even Orange County, there's a demographic shift. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's probably going to have to wait until after the 2020s when we redistrict. Uh, and, and acknowledge the, the great demographic uh, transition, especially in California, but throughout the country. And that's, of course, you're reading that's what the, the backlash having with the momentum behind Trump is, is this sort of last stand of, uh, of, of, of whites against the change in the country. Obama versus Clinton, I thought, was interesting. Uh, this was in, uh, also in 2000. This was a primary, um, and you know, it looks a little different, uh, but now we have Clinton again. So I thought this would be a fun one to look at because, uh, you know, uh, we, we don't go until June 9th, I think. So I don't know if Bernie's still going to be in, but, uh, you know, maybe we'll have an interesting uh, map there. Um, you can see that uh, San Francisco went for Obama, but uh, Clinton got the peninsula. I haven't heard Clinton talk about high-speed rail. No. Then we go to uh, the stimulus vote, and for me, this was a very critical junction. It was uh, brought up uh, at the beginning that, uh, you know, Obama had it for two years. Uh, I, I, I think there was a, a major miscalculation. They should, have, they should have gone for way, way, way more uh, because there was not a chance in hell that any of these senators were going to vote for that stimulus. So it didn't matter how much it was. Um, and uh, they got actually three Republicans, the Pennsylvania and uh, Maine, and those are sort of the, the Republicans that disappeared after 2012. Uh, but that's the, the landscape of, of the country, uh, political landscape, and a lot of the opposition to the stimulus had rhetoric against high-speed rail and bicycles. Then there's the, uh, the, the FRA, the USDOT's uh, network, which which it became a, 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 no pun intended, but a third rail uh, to all of these local and statewide elections like Ohio, Wisconsin, uh, Florida. Uh, Kasich, who's still in the running, said it was the dumbest idea he ever heard of. Uh, so, uh, you know, this was in uh, uh, 2012. Uh, so, you know, your, your front runner on the Republican side, uh, besides Trump, um, was not a big... A fan of high-speed rail. So, swirling around in all this uh, is, you know, how much of this was a, a backlash against Obama and just uh, political jockeying uh, to make sure that the Obama administration doesn't leave a legacy? Because Obama did uh, say on uh, many, uh, in many speeches, you know, it was going to be like, you know, his Eisenhower uh, interstate legacy, and that this was going to be. Uh, a signature project that 100 years from now would be called the Obama High-Speed Rail System or something like that, right? So, so how much of it was that and how much of it was uh, really a, an ideological project? And that, to me, uh, is, is more interesting. And, and looking at uh, California and uh, transportation politics in California, Plan Bay Area, for example, um, and the, the discourses around implementing sustainable transportation, there is an ideological project. And that ideological project, to just uh, you, uh, simplify it, is the public good cannot work. And so in Ohio, in Wisconsin, and in Florida, it was, it, it can, it, if the public good works, then our ideological project of privatization, of, of, of defeating uh, public sector labor unions, and all these things uh, will backfire. So it can't work. We have to defeat this. So it was a, a very cynical uh, uh, politics, but across all those states where the governors canceled, it was, it was part of this uh, uh, broader uh, uh, preemption uh, of, of, of trying to keep the, it, not just the administration, but the value, the political values in this country of that the public can do good. 
um, at bay. So here's a quote from the uh, Republican National Committee in 2012. Uh, Obama has replaced civil engineering with social engineering as it pursues an exclusively urban vision of dense housing and government transit. And this is all swirling around all these uh, debates of high-speed rail, even here in California. Um, the alignment uh, debates, the uh, uh, you know, you know, litigation, um, uh, stonewalling in the Central Valley, uh, all of this um, really slows this, this whole thing down. And I put this Agenda 21 uh, image up here because uh, it, it, it may become as a surprise, but even in the Bay Area, our regional transportation and land use plan came out very, very strong at first and got significantly diluted uh, and weakened as it went through the process. This was the, the Plan Bay Area, the nine counties. Um, as these folks came and uh, came to the public meetings and shouted down the planners and, and said, you know, you're, you're, you're going to have black helicopters flying over and you're going to take away our freedom. And it, it, it resonated with a certain population. I think it's dwindling and it gets louder as it gets weaker, uh, at least in numbers. But it's there. Here's Kasich in 2010. Dumbest idea he ever heard. Just a reminder. This was a big network, but uh, and there was a great paper uh, just came out in the Journal of Transport Geography about Wisconsin's uh, high-speed rail debate. But uh, you know, it was that segment from Chicago to Minneapolis that was supposed to that was going to be the the kind of cornerstone of this regional system, and that governor uh, made sure that the whole thing didn't happen. Um, and can, and 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 it's 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 mixed in with a you know destroy public sector unions and all this kind of discourse, which I think is going to be really important going down uh, the line in the future politics of high-speed rail is, you know, when you franchise to a private rail operator, what is that labor politics going to look like? I'll uh, wrap it up with just a couple of things that, that I think are important to think about. They're a little bit more at 30,000 feet maybe, uh, but uh, the, uh, the CEQA issue, California Environmental Quality Act of this corridor, uh, is going to be very, very important. And I appreciate the ambition to 2017 of, of having this all done, but having gone through many planning processes with CEQA um, and knowing that there's a lot of opposition to high-speed rail in Atherton and Palo Alto, which are in this area here, uh, somebody's going to try to use CEQA uh, to slow this thing down. So I hope that the whoever's overseeing this CEQA uh, process is doing due diligence to make sure that it uh, stands up. I'll skip the politics of speed, but I do want to talk about Plan Bay Air, come back to Plan Bay Area, and something that I think is also going to be a, a very important political issue, and that is that the current business plan for high speed rail has verbiage in it that says this is going to help uh, the Bay Area's housing crisis because it's going to enable uh, people to go out into the valley and get in faster or it's going to help put jobs, uh, maybe some of the tech firms will put back offices into the Central Valley or something like that. And that's kind of threads through the, the business plan. But Plan Bay Area actually has a mandate that the Bay Area must accommodate its growth within the nine counties. So there's a little bit of a, of a mismatch there. Uh, the, 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 that, that, is, that is one of the obligations. That is actually state mandated that we don't dump our housing problem on Stockton or Modesto or Fresno. Uh, so I think as this, you know, hopefully it's not really 2029. Uh, maybe we'll have a new uh, Plan Bay Area uh, at that point. But basically we have these two sort of, you know, different outlooks. Uh, a high-speed rail plan uh, that's, that's putting the housing out into the, to the valley and the uh, the regional plan in the Bay Area saying it needs to be here. So I think that's an interesting point. And lastly, I'm going to come to energy because a little less discussion about this, but this graph I thought was really interesting. And I just want to, you know, where does California compare? We're at capacity. We're not building any more energy infrastructure. So going down the line, uh, California high-speed rail should look very carefully at where the electricity is going to come from to run this system and look at where the electricity for all of these millions and millions and millions of electric cars, uh, where is that going to come from? And perhaps plan ahead and say, you know what, actually maybe we need to significantly reduce car ownership, the demand on the electrical system from cars 
in order to have the electricity for the rail system. Because this is the, I, this is going to be a very important issue. We got droughts. We got dams coming down. We got you know reservoirs that can't uh, 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 provide the capacity. Muni has an excellent electric transit system uh, that runs on one dam, and when that snow doesn't come. Uh, then Muni has to get it off of the, the, the grid. We don't have coal. Look at Germany. 54% uh, is coal. Um, we're not going to build a nuclear power plant in California, especially with the environmental uh, laws being what they are. Uh, and uh, it's very hard to site a, a gas plant. So we, we're going to have uh, some serious energy constraints. And I'm not, tr I'm not trying to naysay high-speed rail. I'm trying to say grab that allotment ahead of time. Make sure that it's there so that we're not just piping in electricity from Utah that's dirty coal. Uh, so I'll stop there with, the, with my outlook on the, the politics of high-speed rail. It's a very interesting, important issue, and you know I hope some of these issues get into the conversation. Thank you. Take one question. I'm glad you brought up the issue of land use and sprawl. I, I think going back to 2008, actually, some of the environmental groups were actually against or did had serious reservations about high-speed rail because of sprawl in the Central Valley. And it was kind of an interesting issue at the time. I found it kind of stunning. Mm -hmm. uh, I think globally, you know, most people see high-speed rail as it's, it connects more like airport service. It connects longer distances and enables connectivity to other systems. Um, so I, I think in the Central Valley, Pricing. They haven't released any pricing plans yet, but it's going to be high enough to discourage, especially kind of the Fresno to San Jose daily commute. But I, that's a big, it's a big issue going forward. For the, the yeah, question. and <laughs> and and the 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 concern that environmentalists had was was not just about the whether or not it would be sprawl, but also the actual alignment. Because there was you know many many years there was a debate about whether or not this train should actually go through the Pacheco route, and rather instead it would cross over south of the airport and go uh, through what's called the Altamont Pass and into a actually much denser population area. So there was a lot of uh, a, a debate about that. There was a, some, uh, some CEQA challenges that said that it wasn't analyzed enough and it was basically pivoting off of that idea that it is going to induce sprawl. Los Banos, that was, that's the little town right off of I-5 that, uh, uh, you know, it, I don't know if anybody's buying up the land there, but uh, they can't. They, they can't put prohibitive. Oh, they're not. Oh, they, that got put out. Okay, all right. So then it's Modesto. Okay, thank you.